Good morning and welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit for Monday, the fun day. First day of the week, September 9th, 2024. It is 6.05 a.m. And this morning we find ourselves looking at a breakfast biscuit entitled, You're Part of a Really Big Picture. And that is perhaps the understatement of the year. It comes from Titus chapter 1, verse 1, and following and off we go. So you may have some interest in the weather this morning. For our roll-in, that might be a little slower than usual. The regular old stuff is that today it's 66 degrees on the way to 88 for a high, no appreciable chance of rain today and northeast winds to 10 miles an hour. And then there's that thing, you know, the thing we have to talk about, the storm in the Gulf. The spaghetti models, as of this morning, I believe it was 5.30 Eastern time when they updated it, are all, every single one of them, is east of the Sabine River. One of them is over Lake Charles, most over Lafayette-ish. And uh, one has gone to Florida. And you got to wonder, hey, these guys are saying, let's just do something different than everybody else just to see what happens. But anyway, from one from Lake Charles, most at Lafayette-ish, and then uh, one in Florida. So those are your cones of possibility with winds between 60 and 75 at landfall. So there you go, and your guess is as good as mine. Sunday, this coming Sunday, we continue our series that has been very enlightening, and thank you for the kind words from many of you. Conversations with Jesus. This week, we look at a conversation with Simon Peter. You might know it as the Caesarea Philippi Confession, and within two paragraphs, Peter gets some of the most uh, complimentary words that Jesus ever spoke to a human being, and then he gets told to get behind Jesus within two paragraphs. So it's very interesting. I think we need to look at it together. Join me for that. Now, off we go on uh, your part of a really big picture. I have long been a student of World War II. I have also long been a student of the greatest generation of which my parents were some of the youngest. My father's birthday was yesterday. He would have been 98. He passed away in 2019. Incredible generation, incredible people, incredible accomplishments. When I think of the entire war effort in World War II on the part of the United States, I am absolutely taken aback. In 1939, 1939, estimates of the Army strength, the United States Army strength, ranged between 174,000 and 200,000 soldiers, smaller than the Army of Portugal. Let that sink in. Which ranked its 17th or 19th, depending on who you're listening to, in size. In 1939, George C. Marshall, translate the Marshall Plan, great man, uh, became Army Chief of Staff in September of 1939. It happens to be the same month that uh, Nazi Germany invaded Poland. And he set about expanding and modernizing the Army in preparation for what they felt to be an inevitable war. <clears throat> U.S. involvement in World War II grew to a total of, are you ready for this? We started off at 174,000. By the end of 1945, or the, the end of the war in 1945, there were 16 million people uh, that were in the military, approximately 11,200,000 in the Army, 4,200,000 in the Navy, and 660,000 in the Marine Corps. So that's military personnel. Listen to manufacturing. I'll, I'm, you know I'm a Jeep freak. Uh, almost 650,000 Jeeps were produced during World War II, one of the main manufacturers being uh, Willys Overland Motors, forerunner of today's Chrysler Motors. <clears throat> if you want to hear some amazing things, I'll try to say them quickly, not to take up too much of your time this morning. During the war, they produced or built 10 battleships, 27 fleet aircraft carriers, 110 escort carriers, 211 submarines, 907 cruisers, destroyers, and escorts, 7,500 railroad locomotives, 41,000 guns and howitzers, 82,000 landing craft, 100,000 tanks and armored vehicles, 124,000 ships of all types. You ready for this one? 310,000 aircraft of all types. 806,000 two and a half trucks, vehicles of all types, 2.4 million, 12,500,000 rifles and carbines, and 41 billion rounds of ammunition. Nobody could do all of that by himself or herself. It took a massive coordinated effort, and there had to be clear, decisive leadership, and people had to do what they were told by that leadership at every level. Listen to what Paul had to say, or said, listen to what Paul had to say about the kingdom 
of God and how it can be effective. <clears throat> Titus 1.1, 1, 1, I have been sent. I have been sent to proclaim faith to those who God has chosen and to teach them to know the truth that shows them how to live godly lives. This truth gives them confidence that they have eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised them before the world began. So what is Paul saying? I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to do exactly that. Why? Because God is God, because the kingdom of God is huge, and I can only do one part. So I'm going to do the part that he told me to do, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability for his glory and for the blessing of his people. Not everybody was a Paul. There had to be a Timothy. There had to be a John and a Peter and a James and a Stephen and Dorcas and Barnabas and apostles and evangelists and pastors and teachers and chair movers and lunch fixers, and they all had to do what they were told because they were servants and they were all under authority and they all wanted the glory of God and the blessing of his people. Kingdom of God is still a bigger operation than the United States military during World War II. We have an exceptionally capable general, president, God. That's why it's important that we do what we're told for his glory, for the blessing of his people. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for time together to turn aside and look at your word and to pray together before we begin our day. Lord, we ask you today to help us realize that we can't do everything, but we must do something. We must do exactly what we're told in the kingdom of God for your glory, for the blessing of your people. Lord, help us to do it with zeal, with determination, with quality. In Jesus' name, amen. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'll see you right back here bright and early tomorrow morning. God bless you.